Hey guys, how's it going? It is Kyra here with another Infinite Magic Raid video. And in today's video, I want to talk about the food problem. This is a well-known topic point in this game that there's just not enough food here in this game. But I want to go a little further, talk about where I think the real issue lies and hopefully what they can do to improve this. So most part in this game, a lot of it is just waiting on food and how much it takes to actually level up these characters because it just takes way too much resources to be able to level up and fully ascend these characters. And I I think us getting more and more food is going to just be better for the game because the, the fun of this game is being able to think of different team comps and be able to use those different team comps and try them out and experience that in the game whether it be through campaign whether it be through dungeons and then in the more specific parts here in the faction abyss and tower of mark where they limit you on the different types of characters so it really encourages you to want to go wide on your roster but this game how they do it is they really make it difficult to be able to get the food to actually level up these characters here here to then actually get to use them because that's pretty much the main argument when it comes to why food is a problem but it goes a little further than that whereas even if you fix the food issue and just buy a whole bunch of shards then what you'll run into is an experience issue and because you just there's really no good way to farm experience most of these games what they'll do like raid for example you go through in the campaign here you go there's going to be one efficient node to farm like let's say it's in raid it was like 12-3 you always farm 12-3 or later on you'd farm like 12-6 in like a different difficulty that was the move and then you would be able to farm a whole bunch of xp you have one character that is sole purpose is to give experience to the other characters they're going to be the food that you build up and so on and so forth whereas in this game it really doesn't give you many options for experience so not only is there a food problem but there's an experience problem and usually you get those through events for example these where there's a million experience so you got to be able to save these up and i haven't leveled up a character in a while that I didn't like revert someone else. I've been using those to be able to level up other characters. So I do have a decent amount of these uh, premium hero experience potions, but when I'm leveling up characters, usually it's like I level them up, they're 141, and then I have finding them throughout the game, and then, like, okay, I got four more. Okay, can I get them to 142 or whatever? Uh, having a ton of them is very rare, and I think a lot of people experience that. But maybe not so much because the food problem is such a big deal that no one even bothers to level up the character, so even if they could, they, would, they don't realize that the experience is the issue as well. So as I was going through other parts of content here, like let's say, trying to beat a uh, green mark but i'm just trying to like barely squeeze by and i was like trying to level up this character here what i realized that the issue is even if i'm leveling up kind of the issue is just how useless they are until they're fully a5 and th that is the big issue in my opinion is that they limit so much of the character um, until they're fully awakened then you get to actually use the full character because not only does the equipment get limited, for example, here's, well, let me go to a character like this. So no awakens at all. I don't get to use any of this bottom row. I only get to use these right here. Their base stats are massively reduced. And even if I did level up the emblems here, I'm only limited to these two rows here. So not only are you limiting my base stats, you're limiting my gear, but you're also limiting my emblems. And th I think that's the big problem that is making these characters feel completely worthless until you fully level them up. So then it makes it even more limiting to where you don't even want to bother trying a character out or making it to where they're just going to be a support character with minimal gear because you can't even really fully do anything with them like this character would die almost immediately as i was using them because i don't get full emblems and i don't uh, get to use this piece here and usually games have some kind of way like raid for example you can still use most of the character like what they would limit is the final thing here Whereas like the, the big node at the end you couldn't use, but you can at least get them up to a certain point. And then in uh, certain game modes, such as like Faction Wars, they weren't completely worthless. And when you were using them here, you can kind of get away with using a character that's maybe five star. It's like a tanky character that you just want to use them for their good abilities, for example. And I'm noticing too, one of the issues and why these characters are not that good is, is there's really not much CC that we can provide to enemies in this game. And so what's happening is we're going through here and the only way to survive is through shields and taking damage and then waiting to be able to do damage back whereas in raid and in other games that i've experienced when it comes to this is we could be way more proactive in our dots and in debuffs or we could be way more proactive in our debuffs to be able to prevent them to be able to slow them to be able to stun them stuff like that maybe provoke and make them attack someone tanky so it's actually stopping them from doing what they're doing versus in this game the only way to really 
stop someone from doing something is going to be to we put a shield on they do their damage and then we either heal it or remove it whether it be like a, a dot debuff something like that that's another there's all these compounding issues here there's very few characters in this game that can consistently put stuns up or i can't think of a single person that does an aoe provoke that's consistent like or even if there's like an aoe attack down it's not consistent like one example of a character that i can think of is that we all get here in the market or the event store to so rune here even him it's like 200% uh, defense damage to all enemies and reduces their turn meter by 20% with a 30% chance to inflict stun for one turn and it can go up to 35% chance. So the final compounding thing on why it's difficult to like take these characters in that are not fully geared and, and ready to go is so much of the game is really reliant on you three starring that content to, for it to actually matter. So for example, uh, all of this, we need more stars to be able to get through. This is probably one of the least things that that needs stars to actually uh, matter to progress when it comes to auras this is something that's like later content but mainly we just wanting to progress through here and consistently be able to farm this to be able to get auras but the things that most people are on currently are going to be tower mark and especially campaign so campaign we need the three stars to be able to fully get catherine and there's no way you can three star this if you just have a guy that's weak you're just going to die immediately and there's really not that many characters that can res someone and even if they can you know it's like a, a mythic character here but then you're really slowing yourself down because you're on a 100 turn limit so you need every single person contributing meaningfully every single one of those turns if you want to have any shot of being able to do this then for example dungeons this is something that they're so difficult that there's no way in hell you're ever going to be able to bring someone that's so weak into this and actually contribute they're just going to die immediately because we have no way of ccing the waves before we can get to the boss maybe it's a character that you just want to be able to do something on the boss or be able to help you out, boost you up as you clear these waves, but they can't really do anything because we have no CC. And then Tower of Mark here, we need the uh, stars to be able to progress through here. Mainly, I guess the thing that you can you can do is use them as like a shield remover or something like that, but it's very difficult to be able to get a character to consistently survive in, for example, I think a big example of that would be on stage 20 here, to be able to consistently survive through the waves, to be able to get to this guy and then be able to remove his shield consistently while he's not fully leveled or maybe you can get by it like awaken four for example but it's just not going to happen so even in the niche scenarios where you would want to take a guy that's just you doing one job and you have your other carries around him it's going to be very difficult to get him to that point and even when you do it you need it multiple times and so the boss is going to be doing like aoe damage and so it's really hard to hide the fact that he's not fully leveled up yet so there's definitely an issue here and i think you know the easy answer here is just give us more food but i think it's there's a lot of issues here that are not just more food it's like the characters we have are not um, proactively CCing people that often. And the limitations when it comes to the uh, the emblems and the gear that we have is a problem. The amount of base stats that you're missing until you're fully exclusive is a problem. Like there's a lot of issues here that I don't know where to target this because it, it, not only do you get an increase in stats here when you're awakening a character, look at these raw stats here where we're going up 400 defense, we're going up another 500 attack and another what, you know, that like 10,000 HP just from going from here to here, but then you're getting that boost and then plus the leveling there too. So it's like even more so. So it's such a big difference to awaken these characters, let alone the amount we need to do. And then all the other issues on top of that. So it's like, hopefully they do something to address this, but it's there's a lot going on here. And I hope that they at least are conscious of this because it's really discouraging to play a game that has all these cool opportunities to like try stuff out and see stuff. But then all it is is we're just sitting here waiting on it. Like most people's accounts are gonna have like three characters, four characters fully leveled up. And then they're just sitting on resources until they can fully level up someone else, which takes a very long time. There's no way to like meaningfully progress with like hey let me just kind of use a little bit of my resources in one character and get to try them out and use them in a team as a support or something like that whereas i feel like other games do a better job at that so that's pretty much my thoughts on the whole food issue i know this is a pretty common topic here but i just want to give my thoughts on it maybe go a little deeper into it curious what you guys have to think about that and with that guys i'm out of here peace